here we are again. Uh, I thought I'd um, spare you the boredom of the drive-in this time. So where am I? I am at the top of the Jameson Ridge track in the Nelson Lakes. I'm just actually heading down again now. I've got to break out the bush. Got all my gear this time. Got my rifle with me. My big Tatonka Bison pack. Now it looks like a nice, beautiful spring day. I know with the sun, but we're still in winter. Um, sort of towards the end of winter now. And well. I thought I'd come up and brutalize myself again by doing a tenting trip up here. Is that a mistake? I don't know. I'll tell you what, for the first half an hour coming up here, I felt like a big mistake. You'll see this time I've got a bit of a beard going to keep me warm up here as well. I've been watching a whole load of videos online about all these guys out there that go into the extremes and the guy's name Joe Joe uh, Joe Robinet Joe Robinet something like that he's pretty hardcore he uh, he was on alone don't know if you've seen that the TV show and unfortunately he was one of the first to tap out because of a rookie mistake it can happen to anyone I guess but he uh, he lost his lost his fire steel in the sea. I don't know how that happens. Anyway, yeah, so I've been watching, watching a bunch of those things. Let me just move my rifle. Watching a bunch of those things and I thought, uh, rather than sitting on the couch watching them, I should get off the couch and go and actually do it. Obviously I'm not bushcrafting or anything. Uh, as close to it as possible. I've got all my gear. Unlike him, Joe, uh, we can't light fires in the national parks in New Zealand, believe it or not, fire risk. But yeah, not allowed to. So you've actually got to bring stuff that's pretty damn warm. And you've got to have cooking equipment because again, you can't light a fire. I'd love to be able to do that. I mean, look, look where I am. It's wood everywhere. Okay, admittedly, we're on the, on the tops in the forest and I'm going above the wood line, the tree line. So there wouldn't be anywhere I'm going anyway. But, I mean, up here it'd be perfect for this track. It's stunning. Except for this really thick, scorchy bit. There are a couple of, um, American hunters I just bumped into on the way, they're going on the way down. They got a, a hind this morning, a female deer. Um, and they said there's lots of sign around. So, fingers crossed, I'll get one too. And uh, we'll be cooking up some venison steaks while I'm up here, instead of my awful rehydrated stuff. Hey ho, beggars can't be choosers. Hey, this sunlight, oh. I've been going two hours. It's cold and humid down there, but now the sun's just peeking through and it feels nice, but I can hear the wind howling up the tops where I'm going. So uh, let's hope it's not too crap. Anyway, I'll get back to you later with a sit rep once I've broken through the bush and we'll look for a place to camp. See ya.
Ooh. Everything's set up, nice and cozy. Oh shit, fell off my cushion. Oh, tell you what, it's cold. That's why I've got this on. It's my Katmandu 750. 7.50 down, it's so warm. All I've got under here is the t-shirt that, the, uh, t -shirt that I walked up here with. Man, I'm knackered. That was a hard climb up. I think it was harder than last time, but I was carrying more gear this time. These tussocks are a real pain in the ass. Right. I think I need to boil up some water. I've just gone and got it. I spared you from having to see me do that, but there's a tarn just a couple of minutes away. You're getting a nice crotch shot, aren't you? Should have put my trousers on. Um, I've sort of got this double wrapped at the moment. It's still really, really windy. It's howling over there. It's howling just six feet behind the tent. You see that? Just about. The other side of the tent is getting pushed in a bit. These trees are gonna save me. And I just had a thought, I thought, wow, I am actually in the tree line. Oh, I could have had a fire, but in this wind, it's so dangerous. Those embers can spread. I mean, everything is so damp and it's freezing cold. Nothing would ever catch, but still, it would be very irresponsible to light a fire in these conditions um, with this much tussock around and everything else. And this, that's how these bushfires start. I've got such a great view here. It really is beautiful. Um, maybe I'll turn this around and show you what I'm looking at here. That's my view. I don't know if you can make it out. It's just spectacular. It really is. And then these are the trees that I'm in, just beside. You can see up and over at the back there. I have to say this is one of the best tree line camping spots, tent spots that I've found so far. It's amazing. Usually when I tent, I'm right up in there, but as you can see, that's, that's in the cloud. Can't see anything up there. It's in the mountains. Ooh, I'm getting a bit of a headache. I think I'm a bit dehydrated. So what I've got, put this back down here. You're getting really good crotch shots, shots on this. Okay, what have I got? I've got this crappy little backpack. <laughs> but it's so handy just to chuck anything in on a, you know, if I'm going up for a day walk or something. But for hunting, it's great. Right, so I filled one up that I'd already had with my Gatorade powder in. So that's, I'm gonna start chugging that soon because I am dehydrated. And I filled two more bottles up. And this is tarn water. Uh, are you supposed to boil it? Yeah, well, it's flowing, so not really here. You were very lucky in New Zealand, especially on the South Island, especially up high here. Uh, the water's so pure, it's beautiful. You just don't need to boil it. Oh, I have my knife just in case I had to bash through the ice. Oh something I never go anywhere without, my EPIRB. So this is, I think this is a McMurdo. Uh, it is, McMurdo 406 PLB. Personal locator beacon. Don't go anywhere without this. Um, you read all these stories about these people who 
just, you know, die or whatever, get stranded and didn't have one of these. And then you read about the people that did have one and they get rescued by helicopter when shit hits the fan, that sort of thing. I'll give you a lowdown in what's in my tent. I'm getting hot in here. This jacket is unbelievable. This is a Katmandu X series 750 loft. It's really, it's um, mountaineering, I, I guess, expedition sort of jacket. Not professional expedition, not sort of Everest or anything, but if you're a mountaineering, this is the thing. Uh, it's like wearing a duvet. I bought this with me because I didn't want to bring a, a jumper, a sweatshirt, a sweater. This is just so much nicer to wear and it ventilates really well. It breathes so well. And the beauty of this thing is it's waterproof. It's got a great waterproof layer. I've been skiing in this. Uh, and you know when you're sitting on the ski chair and you're freezing your butt off. In this, I was so hot. It was beautiful. Just opened it up a bit. I mean, it's got great bottles. It's got great uh, water bottle holder inside to keep your water warm so it doesn't freeze. Other bits and bobs. Um, it's got water repellent down inside. Uh, just amazing. It's a great jacket. So that's what I'm wearing. You don't mind the up the crotch shot, do you? Should I leave my bag here just to block it? No? My knife. Again, don't go anywhere. Else. My Bear Grylls Gerber knife. Full tang. Beauty with a hammer on the end. And this thing I've used a lot. It's got a serrated blade just here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. And it's got a fire starter catchment here that's really sharp. And it's got a ferro rod. Let me put that down so I don't get, kill myself. It's got a ferro rod here. So it works really, really well. Gerberus, so good. And, you know, very clever having Bear Grylls put his name on there. Oh, and it's got the SOS Alpine signal rescue things on the back. But great knife. Razor sharp, got my sharpener with me as well. It's such a great handle. Uh, great for skinning, gutting, everything else. Great for getting in there. You can do anything with this. I've actually chopped small trees with this as well. It's got a nice sturdy pouch. This actually has a sharpener built in to the edges. So every time you put it in, it gets sharpened a little bit. But on the back side of it, built in as well, is a sharpener. You just gotta wet it, or not. But it works so well, all included. So if you ever see this, it's the original full-size Gerber Bear Grylls knife. It's full tang and it is, look, see, even holds it in. Um, fantastic bit of kit, really is. Is it heavy? I guess it's a little bit heavy, but who cares? It's a great knife. Don't go anywhere without it. Do you want to see what's in my tent? I'll save you that till I'm actually in there later. Uh, right, I'm going to boil up some water. Uh, I swear by MSR. I, I don't know, I just think they make the, the best stuff. I really do. It's expensive stuff. But so, you know, so what? Get what you pay for in life. And so I carry MSR gear with me. I thought... Well, I thought there might be snow. I thought I might be going up to the tops, which is why I bought my white gas stove. I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna do, so I always err on the side of caution, and I bought it with me anyway. My MSR Dragonfly. God, such a great piece of kit. This thing has saved me so many times when butane just hasn't worked. You sit there for ages with butane in altitude, even those jet bores, I mean, I've got the MSR, uh, what do you call it? Is it the wind burner? It's like a jet boil. And again, yeah, it's okay, but you can't cook anything in it. Because there's no sort of simmer function, it's just burn. So it's great if all you want to do is water, hot water, then yeah, those jet boils are okay. They're, they're pretty good. But I want flexibility to be able to cook stuff. Like if I do get some venison tonight, I want to be able to fry some, some steaks up. So when you're hunting or anything like that, it's a weighty piece, 
of equipment, but it's so worth it. It really is. MSR, those guys just make great stuff. There are a few companies out there that just seem to excel with everything that they make. And they're all, they're always expensive. So that's my heat proof thing here. Um, let me just turn this down a bit so you can see it. There. You can't see me, but who cares? The other thing I carry, okay, so yeah, that's MSR. I've got my fuel. Um, I made a mistake last time. I had it lined up. I didn't thread this on properly and I lost about a quarter of my fuel. I suddenly smelt it. I'm a lot more careful these days with everything like that. Um, so, let me just pop this on. There. I just gave it a bit of a service. Uh, it comes with a surfacing kit as well, which is great. Just a little portable kit to carry with you. Everything is just so professionally done. I don't need a wind windscreen. There's no wind here at all. And to be honest, even if there was some wind, this thing's so powerful, you just don't need it. Now, in my box of tricks. My cup, I've got a new cup coming though. So I used, I always carry a plastic piece of crap, but I've got, actually got a titanium cup coming. Um, which is a bit better, I think, titanium. My big lighter, don't go anywhere without your big lighter. Cleaning kit, cleaning kit, and my spork. If I need a knife, I'll use my big knife. Now this, I got on AliExpress. If you don't know what AliExpress is, you don't, you don't know what you'd be missing. It's like the Chinese sort of Amazon, but it, it's got access to where all the, all the things are actually made. This is a Bulin um, aluminium heat exchange pot. I got it on AliExpress. Oh my God, this thing boils so, so fast. It really does. It's, I mean, <laughs> I can't even describe how much faster this thing is than an ordinary pot. I'll turn this up a bit just so you can see it talking. I guess it's a bit rude. There you go, right. I need to turn it off to move it. Right, so yeah, this thing is so amazing. The Boolean, uh, heat exchange pot. The way it works is the hot air goes up the little heat exchanger, traps it in there, heats all the bottom bit really fast and then any excess comes out the top, creates this flow of heat. So your water that is in the bottom there just gets boiled super fast and then turns around in it really, really quickly. So that's my boolin. Now, let's see, is this level? I guess it is. I'm going to show you how fast this thing goes. But first of all, I'm going to do some work. I've got to prime this thing. Okay. Open that up. All right, what I do is just release a little bit of fluid. There. That's it. Get your fingers out of the way. So you're priming it. If you don't know what that is, if you've only ever used butane, uh, what you're doing priming wise is, ooh, I'm suddenly creating steam because of the heat from that. That's amazing. It wasn't happening before. I can feel the heat from it. Um, you're superheating this plate in the middle, getting it really hot. So then when you do release the fuel, uh, it vaporizes and you get that heat and it gets red hot. That's amazing that I'm, you're seeing steam on my breath now. It is that cold, but you weren't seeing it until I lit this. That's how much heat this is giving off all by itself. So it starts to sizzle a bit and then you know, you know that it's ready. That flare up, there we go. Right, and then I, Yeah. Right, that 
It'll be red hot soon. What's for dinner? I don't even know what I'm making. I'm putting this on, I haven't got a clue what I'm going to do for dinner. I'll boil it first and then deal with that afterwards. So let's see, what do I want to drink? I want, I want a hot chocolate and I, I want a hot chocolate and I want dinner. I'll do the whole thing. So this is 600 ml of water. Let's see how quickly I can get this thing to boil, 600 ml. Into that. that is just, it sounds like a jet engine, it really does. I don't even know if you can hear me over this noise. It's so loud. The wind is still howling. You can see the breath. The temperature is suddenly really dropped. See my breath? It's cold, it is cold, but I am warm in this jacket. You don't really lose that much heat from your legs, so I don't even need my trousers on. My feet are getting a little bit cold, because I'm just sitting here. I've got my insulated lower Hunter Extreme boots on. Yeah, fantastic boots. That's what I've been sitting on. Hello. I don't know, it's a bit, a bit gay, but whatever. I've got that on my Thermarest Neo Tech. Neo Rest? What is it? Thermatech something. Thermarest. Neo Air. That's it. I'll show you around in here. Whoa. Right, what's going on in here? Oh, it's so toasty in here. Right. Pocket, all my junk. My Stony Creek waterproof insulated gloves. Oh, see the steam. Well, oh, that's red hot now. Look. That's so cool. It's so much better than one of those crappy butane things. Um, this is my goose down thousand. Thousand gram, thousand fill, thousand weight, I guess. Sleeping bag. Actually, you know what? It's a, a cheapo. It's called a Free Fire. And again, I got it on AliExpress. It was really cheap. I've used it once in a hut, and the hut was freezing cold. This was lovely and warm. We'll see how I do tonight because I don't have any long johns with me or anything like that. But I can always put my jacket on. I do have pairs, two pairs of socks. Ah, food. My food bag. Quite a bit of food in there. So what else have I got? My gimbal. I don't know why I haven't got it plugged on at the moment, but I don't need it. My rifle tucked down there. My rifle gear. My uh, emergency matches. My first aid kit over there. Oh, you can see the air vent. Even though it's, even though it's cold, there's a, a myth that you should seal everything up, but it wouldn't make any difference if you didn't, if you did seal it up. And this is actually, the water's actually just starting to steam. I think it's almost boiling. Um, yeah, I've got my pillow, my uh, Stony Creek trousers, suppressor trousers. You know, that sort of, ah, uh, for tonight, for dessert. Bit of brandy. And a real treat tonight. It's from warm enough. A couple of cigars. Monte Cristos. I love my Monte Cristos. And my Petzl headlamp. That's pretty much everything. 
It wasn't that much. It felt like a hell of a lot more. There's my bat, my pack out there. It's massive. It's the Tatonka Bison 90 plus 10. Uh, the reason I have to carry such a massive pack is if you do get a deer, then you've got to cart it all back. But it is cold, isn't it? See all that steaming up. Last time I bought my uh, chair, my chair that converts my thermo rest into a chair. I'm just kind of regretting not bringing it now. That was so comfy. I'm just, you just lean back on it. Oh, it's great. It's so lightweight. But I just didn't want all the extra clutter. Right, we're actually, I think, simmering or boiling or something at the moment. Let's have a look. Yep, almost there. Good. Right, that is boiling. Right, well, I'm going to cook up some dinner. I think uh, tonight's meal will be a backcountry cuisine. Oh, we are boiling. That didn't take long at all. So, I could simmer it, but I don't need to. I'm just going to turn it off. Right, peace and quiet. I wonder if you've been able to hear me over all of that. Probably not, but whatever. Oh, and typical. My food is right at the bottom of my food bag. So I've got to get all my food out. That's stupid. Anyway, come back to you later. Okay, so actually I've got all my food out, so I might as well show you what I've got. Uh, sweetened condensed milk. Hot chocolates. Some coffees. Some cup of soups, instant soups. Some pita breads. We've even got a little bit of butter in there and some salt and pepper. My breakfast cereal. One, two. My extra trail mix, scroggin. I've added M&Ms and things like that to it. Uh, these are handy, Nutri-Grain breakfast bars. They weigh, weigh nothing, but handy if I'm gonna go out and hunt and not doing up a breakfast or anything, just give me a bit of a spike of energy in the morning. Beef jerky. Huh. My greens, sushi. Uh, not sushi, what am I talking about? Seaweed. Um, I love seaweed and it gives you some good fiber. Not a lot of else I think in there, but it is good fiber. Yeah, sushi and it weighs nothing at all. It's good to look, nibble on. Uh, now, couscous. I add couscous to my soups to give them a bit more texture. Uh, my lunch for tomorrow is a continental chicken curry. That's what I've got the butter for. Mix that up and cook that. You see, you can't cook, you see, you couldn't be able to cook that if you had a jet boil. Oh, it's so beautiful out there now. Look at my, look at my view. It's just majestic. Look at that. Look at the, just the hills in the background. And I wish I'd bought Bruce. I wish I'd bought my dog, but you're not allowed to in New Zealand country parks. Might have to look into getting a permit for him. It's a bit of blue sky out there, but there's also what looks like snow coming. Yeah, sorry. So if you have one of those jet boils, you can't cook that up and it doesn't work with hot water. It's just freaking awful. So you do have to cook these sorts of things and they weigh nothing. So they are great. They are really great to take. Especially when you've got some pita breads. Uh, dinner. Dinners, I've got backcountry cuisine, roast lamb and vegetable or honey soy chicken. I know the honey soy chicken is absolutely delicious, so I'm gonna have that tonight. And finally for dessert, these are heavy. Some fantastic chocolate Afghan biscuits. Three for each night, three, two nights. So, so tempted to tuck into these now. Yeah, I think I've overdone it on the food. I'm gonna be gluttonous and have to eat it all. I'm not carrying it back down. And now you know what's gonna happen is tomorrow morning I'll probably get a deer. <laughs> oh well, never mind. Right, honey soy chicken and 
uh, hot chocolate. See you later. It's starting to get dark. I don't know what time it is. Honey soy chicken, that country cuisine. It's very good for a rehydrated meal. Mm. Pita bed with a bit of butter. Mm. Actually, it's meant to be spreadable margarine. Totally solid. Totally solid. Because it's so flipping cold. As long as you're out of the wind, it's not so bad. But my toes are cold. Not doing anything. Even though these are insulated boots, once you stop moving, and of course, your feet sweat when you're walking. As soon as it gets cold. I've got one spare pair of very thick socks that I must not get wet, damp, or anything to wear in the sleeping bag. Basically, I'm just not going to put anything else on until I get in the sleeping bag. And then I'm going to start out in the sleeping bag with as little as possible. And if I have to wake up and put more on, then so be it. If I put this jacket on, because I think, hang on, your feet get cold because your body is taking um, blood or whatever away to keep your core warm. Look at that. This is meant to be spreadable. It's like an ice cube. Spreadable butter. How is that spreadable? That's so stupid. Yeah, so if your core is cold, your feet are going to be cold. But my core is warm. So it's not that. I can only assume it's just because my feet are damp and they're sitting out. So it's nothing to do with my core temperature at all, I hope. Because I've got this jacket undone now, I'm so warm. Yeah, getting a bit fed up of sitting down actually. So I'm going to stand up and have this. Before, maybe just before it gets dark, you might join me. Join me for a little a wee dram. Oh, it's brandy. What do you call it if it's brandy and it's not whiskey? A shot? I don't know. And a cigar. Of course, again, with cigars, you've got to be careful. Out here. And cigarettes, anything like that. Safety first. I tell you what, I hope I don't get diarrhea in the middle of the night. <laughs> I'm fancy coming out and putting my boots on, running into the bush and digging a hole in the middle of the night. And hopefully that's all been and gone, done and dusted. It's so calm suddenly. It is blowing. The cloud is moving very fast, and I can hear it roaring in the background of the top of the trees. This is such a fantastic location that I found. Oops. The sun is actually setting, but it's behind clouds somewhere over there. So I figure sunrise will be behind me obviously, behind the tent. But it's winter anyway, so what, what sort of 
heat am I going to get out of it anyway? I'd rather have a nice sunset tomorrow night. But I don't think I'm going to get it because I think the forecast is a little bit of snow tomorrow. What do you think of my beard? I haven't been growing it long, just over a month. I think uh, my wife and someone would get rid of it. I think my mother-in-law thinks I'm a... Well, have a guess. She thinks I look like a terrorist. Um, hmm. I guess you get a lot more respect with a beard. Look at like this with my colour. You do get signaled, singled out on planes though. <laughs> airports. I guess that's just the day, the age we live in, isn't it? But it's nice not to have to shave. It is a bit of a flavour saver. When you have a beard, how do you stop food and... I'll tell you what really annoys me now. Toothpaste. When you brush your teeth, you get toothpaste in your beard. Top with that. Oh, I've got a question. For all you people who follow Joe, let's just call him Robin A, okay? Because I think it's French. He's Canadian. Robin A. For all those who follow him, have you ever seen him brush his teeth? Now, I like this guy. I like Joe. I've never talked to him or met him or anything. But I like him. I like what he stands for. I like that he's a family man. He's doing all of this for his family. And um, he's creative. And he's got to keep thinking out the box to keep everybody interested in his videos. So I like him a lot. Uh, plus I've learned a lot from him. Um, I don't know about hiking up with beers though. I'll tell you what I have found. Maybe Joe wants to try these. I might contact him. But you can get concentrated beer and then add it to water. It sounds like it's gonna be crap though. But it's worth a try, right? You've got to try all these different things. I'm sure next thing that Joe's going to do, or someone should do, like him, is start making your own whiskey and making your own brandy to take up. Because surely that's the point of this, is especially the stuff he does. He's trying to be self-sustainable as possible. Well, it's not very self-sustainable stopping off at a um, convenience store on the way and picking up a couple of beers but I do like what he does. And I do hope he does well. And I wish he'd won alone, because obviously he knows what he's doing. And that was such a rotten bit of luck. Basically, he put his fire steel down, in case anyone hasn't seen it. He put his fire, fire steel, which is your ferro rod, which you use to light fires. He put it on a log by on the beach by the water. I think he actually put it on his jacket, which was on the log. That's right. And after he'd finished doing what he was doing, he turned around, grabbed the jacket, picked it up, and put the jacket on and walked away. Next minute you know, he's back there, and he realizes he's lost his ferro rod. He's played the video back, and he's realized it's obviously gone into the sea, and the sea's come in, the tide's come in. I think he spent two hours looking for it. And then I think he sat there for another few hours thinking, oh my God, what have I done? Is there any other way I can get out of this? Because it's impossible to, to light fires naturally here where they were. Actually, it's getting very dark now, suddenly. And I felt for him, he had to tap out because how could he do it? And I didn't realize that the Alone Show invited Joe to be part of it. He didn't even have to apply. So they obviously believed in him. So he's doing a good job. So Joe Robin A, we'll call him. Shout out to him, because I've been watching a lot of his videos. I love it when he goes with his dog. I do want to see him try and do a, an alpine, an alpine situation tent and see what he comes up with, without a fire. Above the tree line. No fire. No fire, Joe. The reason I'm saying that is, well, I just want to see it. <laughs> we 
without a fire, because I'm not allowed to light a fire, so why should he? So you've got to try every single thing. And most people, I don't think, light fires. I think most people go with camping gear and they don't actually light fires. So how, in a winter environment, in the Alps, above the tree line, how do you spend two nights? Let's say you've got snowed in. How do you spend two nights? What do you do to keep your mind occupied? Because as we all know, that's one of the biggest things is keeping your mind occupied. I'll tell you what, another shout out to Joe for this. I downloaded Audible and they're one of his sponsors. And Audible is owned by Amazon. Audible is a, an online book company uh, where, where they read the books and audio books. And it's amazing. I've got a great deal with them in New Zealand. Because it's New Zealand, I managed to get onto the Australian one, the Amazon site, and I managed to get Harry Potter read by Stephen Fry. I've heard so many great things about it. And Stephen Fry is great. And I got them both free, took the first two for free for signing up. And I got a special three month deal because I accidentally can canceled and then it offered me the three month deal. I said, oh, okay, I'll do that then. Anyway, awesome, audible. So I'm gonna listen to some audio books tonight. I'm gonna listen to some Harry Potter and I'm gonna listen to, cause there's a whole bunch of free ones by Stephen Fry. I think it's called um, English Delights. I wonder if that's a play on Turkish Delight. Anyway, um, I'm getting quite dark, aren't I? This is an iPhone 10, by the way, and I've got it on the front facing. Doesn't seem to be adjusting the light level very well, does it? I'm just getting darker and darker until I'm just going to disappear. Um, God knows where my headlamp is. Oh, there it is. Once you, once you turn these things on, though, that's it. There's no going back. I wonder what difference it makes if I put the headlamp on, looking at me. Let's have a look. Oh, my God. Oh, it's awful, isn't it? Turn that off. Christ. Okay, maybe Apple got that one right. Um, yeah, Audible. So I'm going to listen to a whole bunch of that tonight with my cigar and my brandy. Right, I'm going to do some cleaning up. And uh, might join you just a little bit later, just with my cigar and my brandy. Over and out. Told ya. Cigar time. Hmm. It's a Romeo Giulietta. Gosh, that's bright, isn't it? Hmm. Wish I could turn the screen up to make it so that the screen was brighter. Let me try that. Hang on a sec. Oh, that works. Yeah, that's better. My view. A little tent. In my pocket is my brandy. It'd be nice to have a little little bench. It might be a project tomorrow. Make a seat. I hope I don't chuck after this. I've not really had a cigar when I've gone hunting before. I heard a noise. Amazing if a deer just pops up over there. Too dark to take the shot. Illegal. But still, it's calmed down quite a bit here. It is still blowing. It is actually freezing. <sighs> still got my shorts on. Feet are cold. My brandy will warm me up. It's just gone six o'clock, I think. About 20 past six, something like that, 10 past six. 
fur. And it's cold. I'm now cold. Not in my jacket I'm not, but my feet are cold. I'm starting to feel it through my jacket because all I've got on is a t-shirt under here. And I'm standing in the wind. It's a breeze. It's still gusting up there. Oh well. Great sight though. Perfect sight. See, this is now where you need a roaring fire. Just over there somewhere, with a nice bench seat. I don't know, roaring fire, a cigar, brandy, a bit of bushcraft. That'd oh, be so good to have a fire here, it really would. I think you're only allowed to light them in an emergency if your life depends on it. <laughs> right. Well, I think it's time to hit the sack. And that's only six ish. It's way too early. But I can listen to some of the audiobooks. Just chill out. I've got an early start. Up before dawn, I need to walk up to a glassing position and just look over the whole area on the other side of the, the hill up there. Because obviously I'm out of view here with all of that and not disturbing the animals that might be on that side. Anything that's on this side, they won't come near me, especially smoking a cigar. Right, I think I'm going to call it a night with the camera because without sitting there in a fire and doing some bushcrafty stuff, you'll probably, you know, there's not much to show you anyway. Just me steadily getting drunk and I'm not doing that on camera. But I have got my brandy. I showed you the hip flask earlier. Shout out to my friend Simon Johns in London who gave me that as a present. It is meant to snow tonight, but only a tiny bit, like maybe a centimetre, nothing. Um, so I don't mind that. I've got the right gear for it. But my sleeping bag is beckoning. Obviously, I'm not going to smoke this in the tent. Duh. Talk about messing up your tent forever. So a few more totes, and then I'm done for the night. All right. Hope you haven't minded uh, the trip up today. Hope it hasn't been too boring. Let's see if we've got some adventure tomorrow, maybe an animal. Take care. See ya.